Give it up one more time, Manchester, for Britt and Jamie, the ladies of AEW. Who run the world? Thank you, thank you. Two people said that, God bless. They didn't, they didn't. Ladies, first of all, how are you enjoying Manchester and for the love of wrestling? Hello, oh, there we go. Um, it's been fabulous and it made me even more excited to come over here for All In. Who's going to All In? Everybody's going, everybody's going. How have you been enjoying the Comic Con so far? It's been so much fun. It's even better to be back in the motherland, so no complaints from me. I'm so happy to be home. Thank you all so much for being kind and wonderful British people, my favorite. What do you miss most from home? The food. Really? Yes. Specifically like? So I've pretty much told everybody this anyway. I'm going back to the south on Monday and the first thing I'm gonna do is get a Toby Carvery. Big pop for the Toby Carvery. Yeah, they're the best. Come on, cheap, cheerful, and delicious. What more do you want? Yes. Speaking of cheerful and delicious, we have talked to so many lovely people from AEW, and it seems like not only is there a great vibe, everyone seems very grateful to be there. What's it like in the locker room? It's it's definitely like a family. It's it's especially being there from the beginning. And Jamie, you've you I feel like you're an OG. She's been I there from like the beginning, OG. deep down. It's so cool to just see the growth that we all have worked together. When AW first started, when I signed my contract, there really wasn't a TV deal yet. We didn't have these huge arenas. We were, you know, selling out and we weren't we didn't have any international dates. Now we're we're going to be wrestling at Wembley. It's huge and to think that like we all did this, it's very empowering. And also I think it's really cool to uh, definitely be from the UK and represent the UK at Wembley too. Um, and also it's almost like a full circle moment for us because I remember the first time we ever wrestled in the UK that was in front of like 200 people and then to go to Pittsburgh and then wrestle you again on a bigger stage when AEW first started it was incredible and to see the growth from the outside looking in as well and now to be part of the roster it's truly incredible the locker room's amazing I like everybody everybody's great we love to hear that. Well, yeah, there's, there's so many great choices for wrestling fans, whether it's WWE, AEW, Impact Wrestling, but what is it about AEW that sets it apart from the others? Well, first and foremost, 99% of the roster are professional wrestlers who were professional wrestling fans who came up on the independent scene. I'm sure many of you have been to an independent wrestling show. So we like, we live, eat, sleep, breathe professional wrestling. We love it. We are fans just like every single one of you. And I think there's so much passion because of that. And of course, passion is good and bad. It creates tension and everyone's competitive. But it, it's just, that to me is what's really special about AEW is just the passion for professional wrestling, having a good show, having good matches and, and telling great stories. I almost feel like the vibe's very DIY. It's very like kind of punk rock. It's different. And uh, yeah, I think everybody has got the same agenda when we're there. Everybody wants to do the best, be the best, and put on the best professional wrestling we can. Well, it's so great to hear from you guys that you're fans, because we're all fans. That's why we're here, for the love of wrestling. But who are you fans of growing up? And is anyone that you liked growing up here today? Any of, anyone that you were excited to meet? We've got Kevin Nash, Charmel. So one of my favorites who has helped me so much along the way now was, unfortunately, Chris Jericho. <laughs> Until now. So it's, it's very bittersweet, um, but he really helped me when I was, was starting to cut promos and, and didn't really know what I was doing. He was one of the, the, the key players that helped me find who I was. Who is Dr. Baker DMD? And then it, it apparently became too much for him to handle because he they beat me up in a ring with a kendo stick last yeah. week. So, but that's okay. Um, we're big Kevin Nash people over here. Where's Big Kev over there? Mr. Nash is somewhere, being big and sexy, somewhere. Brian Danielson, I mean, I remember booing when he did not come out for the Royal, 2014 Royal Rumble. I was in the crowd, because it was at Pittsburgh. I sold my textbook so I could have floor seats for the Royal Rumble. Don't tell my professors at dental school. I was so mad, I had a, a at the time, a Daniel Bryan shirt on. I was yesing in the parking lot, and I was really upset. 
You should tell him that. It sounds like you guys have some beef. You should just go tell him. Yeah, for sure. Who were you a fan of, Jamie? Um, I had a lot of people as a fan of growing up. If we're going to talk like... WWE, definitely Stone Cold Steve Austin, come on. I would always flip everybody and everything off. It was like my favorite thing to do. And I remember on a non-uniform day at school, I wore the Ruck Fool shirt and I got told off and I had to go home. So that was a really great moment for me as a professional wrestling fan. Um, in terms of AEW, I think it's pretty wild that we have a plethora of wrestlers that I used to love watching growing up, like Jerry Lynn, like what a legend. I loved his matches, he's so badass, Demon Linko's awesome. There's just, we're so lucky to have all of these people backstage with a wealth of knowledge that we can just pick their brains at any moment. And I do that a lot. That's very, very cool. Well, as you guys know, we want this to be an interactive Q&A. So, Mr. Brooker, oh. Hello. if you please. To your right. Oh, there he is, to the right. Yeah, me too. We've already got some fan questions. I'm scared. Uh, fantastic. <laughs> First of all, we'll shout, out, shout out to the word plethora. Not used enough. Plethora. Thank you so much. I really like to use those fancy words every so often. Yes. Entertainingly educate. Uh, well, there was someone here. Yeah, please, go ahead. How badly are you going to beat the outcasters' asses when you get hold of them? I want to end their lives. So does that tell you? <laughs> there will be no more outcasts when it's all said and done. It'll be over. Did you hear that, Ruby? Yeah, I by the way, she's listening. Yeah, there's been a little bit of tension, and I know that the seating chart was well noted because obviously you guys are in this area. The other ladies are in the other area. No mistake there. And we're going to keep everything just copacetic and lovely. Isn't that right, Brooker? Uh, yes, and no, right. one, no one's taking this mic off me today. Nope. I've learned my lesson. Don't even try, mate. <laughs> Do uh, it. Before the Outcast storyline, there was a couple of moments of tension between you two last year. Are you going to have a big AEW uh, pay-per-view match? And if so, who's going to get Rebel in the breakup? I believe that your friends make the best opponents. And we've wrestled a few times before, but I don't think we're going to be wrestling anytime soon. We're friends. We're not getting involved. We're, we're too busy at the moment being a fantastic tag uh, team. We're too busy what? being the biggest stars in women's um, wrestling to worry about any of that. Please, uh, I'm so sorry to interrupt. Oh, we, here we go. Here we go. Come on. I have a little bit less of a question. What? And more of a statement. Brooker, you... No, 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 oh, no. no, no, no. Oh, not the banners! No, come on! I signed it in everything. Wow! I have no security, Brooker. Who wants to buy it? Let's start the bids. Go back to your cave, Ruby. I'm. I'm sorry. I. I thought you said nobody was going to take the mic. Yeah, Brooker. I, I just. You're it in all on happened it. so quickly. You're in on it. You told her to do that, didn't you? I'm, why does everyone think I'm running things today? In Just, on things. I'm not. You keep um, letting things happen and letting things slide. I'm a bit suspicious of you now. I, I'm not a wrestler. She'd kill me. You'd kill me. What am I supposed to do? Exactly. Uh, do your bloody job. He's just a feeble man. Brooker, decorum, please. I'm, I really like the word decorum, too. That's a good word. Let, let's get back on track here. Any more questions for our lovely ladies? Our very copacetic, undramatic panel. Brooker, Jesus. Who would you recruit against uh, the outcasts uh, of the women's division? There's a, we have some, some great females. So I'll name a few. Um, if we're going to talk about... AEW Originals. You can't say AEW Originals without saying Nyla. Chris Statlander. Penelope. We got a list. We're not... The, the, the list is, is strong and it's long, so don't worry. We're not worried about that. Who would any of you want to see us kick the outcasts' ass with? No, we're not. Right, we have a question over here. Please don't take the mic off me. Grab it. Do it. Will there, be, will there be any blood in your match? 
kind of have a b- bad habit of that sometimes, huh? I would say yes, uh, then. <laughs> this is a very dark section. Yeah, of Manchester's That's very what we like. <laughs> very oh, controversial. Excuse me, please. Very morbid, I like it. Shh. This one's sleeping, very quiet. Please lighten the tone. Um, what advice do you have for any, um, any of us watching that want to become wrestlers and things like that? What advice you Um, so the best advice I was given very early on when you're, when you're training, when you're learning, to be seen, not heard, to make sure you're really grinding and doing everything you can do to become a better wrestler, not just telling everybody what you're doing. And, of course, I mean, you have to find good trainers, good help, good mentors, and be careful who you take advice from. I also think if you're passionate about something, that will really lead you in the right direction. So just to have passion and heart, there's nothing more you need. But I will also say, go to the gym, work out. Work out really hard because wrestling is very tough on your body. And when you're in a ring, especially when you have longer matches, you need cardio, you need strength, you need everything. You need everything from the inside and outside to help you win a match. That's it. Easy. Good just advice. do it. Just bloody do it. And if you want to go to dental school while you're training, go ahead. That's also good advice. Where is Mr. Brooker? I've lost him. Uh, behind there you, behind oh. you, please. We have someone here who'd like to ask a question. So if you'd like to come up and just... Uh... So I have a question for you all. Who inspired you to become the wrestlers you are today? Cause... Who inspired you to become the wrestlers you are today? That's a hard question because honestly, I feel like this is kind of a cop-out answer, but there wasn't really one person that specifically inspired me to become a wrestler. It was more so just the wrestling business as a whole. Just watching wrestling and being so entranced by it since I was a kid, I just wanted to do it and so desperately. So everything about wrestling that I found on YouTube or just watching it on television, that's what inspired me because I kind of took inspiration from each and every kind of wrestling style and wrestling promotion that I found on my travels and during my research. And yeah, there wasn't, I can't pinpoint one thing because it's, for me, a multitude of things. Um, I started training, I I think it was 2014. And at the time, what made me so excited for women's wrestling was the Sasha Bailey NXT TakeOver match. And then that entire generation, Sasha Bailey, Charlotte, Becky, those girls, they, they really paved the road for the style of women's matches you see on American television right now and then now international television. So that, it just made me so excited and want to run through walls. Like, I can do this too. I can do what, what they're doing. They definitely paved the way for all of us professional wrestlers. So thank you to them. Love that, yes. Definitely applause worthy. Here we go, we have a a gentleman rocking a a very popular statement. What does your shirt say, nice and proud? Fever me daddy ass. I love it. Fair play, and what's your question, sir? Uh, Well, it's for Jamie Hayter. Do you think one day, because I'm expecting it really soon, that Britt Baker will get very bitter soon and turn on you? What do you think? So, oh, come on, guys. I get asked this question all the time, and I'm Every sure day. Britt does as well. What's everybody's problem with friends being friends? Are we all so jaded to think that she's just going to kick my ass or I'm just going to kick hers for some random reason? Friends have hiccups. Friends fall out sometimes, and they go through tiffs. But our friendship will last forever. Yeah, you guys asking that question says more about your friendships than ours. <laughs> We're a strong team. This is real yes. stuff right here, real yeah. friendship. And I don't think it's ever going to end. We want to be one of those friendships in wrestling that does last forever. I love that. We're feeling Magnificent. the love. Magnificent. Over here. Oh, you, you want to play that game? I do, on the mic. Oh. What is the most painful thing that's ever happened in the wrestling ring for both of you? Oh, everything. Yeah. Mine was breaking both of my elbows. Um, and then I had to have 
shoulder to wrist casts and I was like a robot like this and it was a really horrible and weird experience because I did a crossbody to the outside stupidly onto a concrete floor for whatever reason I just wanted to do stuff and uh, I landed funny and I kind of did my body didn't land all at once it was kind of like a ricochet effect finish the match and then I get backstage and my arms are like seizing up into this kind of position like this, both of them. I couldn't even take my gear off. I was in so much agony. And then uh, I went to my mum's house and then I started crying as I was ringing the doorbell and I was like, I think I need to go to the hospital. I'm in so much pain. And I go there, get given a bunch of drugs. Thank you, NHS. We appreciate you. <laughs> And uh, uh, they walk up to me when I'm in the waiting room and they're like, right, um, we're going to just go cast you up. And I was like, pardon? And they're like, yeah, you need shoulder to wrist cast. You've broken both of your elbows. And I was like, oh, okay. And then as they're putting him on, I'm crying my eyes out because, of course, at that moment in my career, I was just starting out getting uh, my foot wet, really, and then that happened. So probably the most painful thing to ever happen. It was also very funny because when I got home, my mum was like, if you need help to go to the bathroom. And I was like, no, no, thank you. I'm good. I'll be absolutely fine. Just let me suffer, please. I'll be totally fine on my own. Very fun experience. But you said you finished the match. Yeah, I did a moonsault as well at the end of the match. That used to be my finish for a very, very hot second. And of course, like, you kind of land like on your arms again. There was about five minutes left of the match too. That's insane. I didn't notice until I got backstage. I, I think anything with chairs and, and kendo sticks are deceivingly awful. They hurt so bad. They sting, they shock you. It's the same spot getting hit over and over again and you, just, you really can't do anything about it. Yeah, they are the worst. Oh, over here. I think it's very apt that the biggest pops of the weekend are for Toby Carveries in the NHS. So yes. I think we're doing the right thing. You're here. all doing me very, very proud, I must <laughs> say. Uh, we have a question here. Why is this a thing? Because oh. it is, son. Deal with it. Wow. Oh, oh. Oh. There, there's going to be a fight. Somebody break this up. All join in. <laughs> now, what is the worst kick to the head that you've had? Because, like, I know how it feels because I had karate competition last Sunday. But yeah, what is the worst kick to the head you've had? Like super kick or roundhouse kick? I'm gonna say a roundhouse kick. They suck. I think you asking that maybe you've had one too many. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I agree. Super kicks are brutal. Yeah. Actually, you know what? Any kick to the head it's, sucks. It's, it's kicking your head. Yeah. Where your brain lives. And like your face is there. Yeah. Your ear, Everything. your jaw, it's not, yeah. 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 Please, please don't cut a promo me as well. <laughs> I've, I've accepted my favorite. Do it, please um, do it. What was your favorite match that ever? Mine will be me versus Tony Storm when I won the belt. Or me versus Shida. They're two of my favorite matches so far, so. I, I have a couple for different reasons, but I think for me, what, what had the most impact on my career in the AW women's division was the lights out match with Thunder Rosa, the first, the first main event. And I would, have been so proud of the women's division ever since that. I mean, everybody has been doing their part to make AEW women, one of the best things in all of wrestling. Yeah. Great question. Fantastic. Thank you. We got a, uh. Hiya. With All In coming, coming to the UK and Mercedes Monet possibly showing up, would either of you two like to take her on? Of course. She's showing up. Do you, yeah. know, do you know something we don't know? Tell me all the details. Of course. Yeah. I think. We pretty much welcome any and all opponents always, so. Yeah, definitely. Except Ruby. Yeah. Well, not after that. Uh, we yeah. have 
right here. And, and you're, you're, you're repping oh, A.E. Dub. Can you both stand up for us, please? A.E. Dub. A.E. Dub. Who, -E -Dub. Has, Dub. Who run the world these ladies do? Give them a round of applause. Yeah. I love to see it. As, as Val would say, who are you wearing? A.E. <laughs> Um, who would be your dream opponents, either past or present wrestlers? This is a very difficult one because there's so many people I would wish to wrestle. I'm going to do a past person, though. Manami Toyota. That would be my absolute dream match from someone from the past if I could wrestle them today. She... Oh my God, if you've never watched any of her wrestling, please watch it. She was impeccable. One of the best wrestlers to ever do it. So this, this question's a no win, because if I say someone from WWE, the dirt sheets tomorrow say, Britt Baker calls out Charlotte. You know what I'm saying? Which I would love to wrestle Charlotte, by the way. <laughs> um, but it, as far as dream match goes, it, it kind of, we were just talking about this, Our an, your answer changes every day and what you're thinking of and the matches you're watching. I would love to wrestle any of the four horsewomen from WWE. As far as AEW goes, I still need to get a win back on Soraya because she yes. beat me and I'm salty about that, so. Oh, we definitely heard uh, Britt Baker calls out Charlotte there, didn't we? That's, uh, I heard it. Yeah, we heard it. Someone get <laughs> Dave on the phone. News. I'll tweet wow. about it. So, Where's Meltzer? No, oh, I accept my fate. Uh, speaking of kicking ass, uh, Ruby Soho's just there, just in case. Um, uh, you want to get your uh, you know, China revenge on her. Um, I mean, one match that we've been wanting to see for a while as fans is... DMD against Diona Perazzo, and obviously Impact has crossed with AEW a few times. Do you think that's uh, going to happen anytime soon? I don't know, but I hope so. Uh, I think Diona is one of the best technical women's wrestlers in the world, and she has completely reinvented herself since she since she got let go from WWE. And she is she's literally one of the best women's wrestlers in the world, and she just happens to be one of my close friends. So I would love to share the ring with her. Great question. We have a question over here on the left. Hi, Hi my question's for Britt Baker. Jade Cargill is an undefeated streak. When are you going to put a stop to that? Yeah. Yeah, that, I guess we kind of would look great with two we would belts. We'd look amazing. Right? If we each had a belt. We'd look so dripped out. Yeah, I don't know. That's something to think about, though, for sure. Wonderful stuff. Um, we, can I introduce you to someone as well? Um, and it wasn't you, but fair play. Uh, <laughs> you had the opportunity. Oh, I didn't take this lad here. Have I got a squint? As I have so many issues going on at the moment. I this, know this kid. Uh, I recognize this kid. Oh, the champ is here. This is, this is Dylan better known as the Rated PG Superstar! He's my favorite wrestler. He's, he's my favorite champion. He, and, and represent, yo, know, the more of us, the better. Um, have you got a question for this fantastic pillar and killer panel? Which WWE wrestler would you, current wrestler would you like to wrestle? Roman Reigns. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> Do the oh, I don't know. Hmm. That's a hard choice because so there is a plethora so hard to pick of one. talent there. But off the top of my head, I would love to wrestle Rhea Ripley. She's awesome. And because they had such a outstanding WrestleMania match, I'm going to go on the other half and yeah. I'll say Charlotte. I thought they had yeah. one of the best matches of WrestleMania, Charlotte and Rhea. So good. Fantastic, thank you. And the rated PG superstar. Thank folks. you, Dylan. Okay, oh, you, you, you nearly hurt yourself putting your hand up there. That's, and, and who are you wearing today, madam? Uh, absolutely AEW. Yes. And uh, go right ahead. So my question's for both of you. You are both absolute symbols of women's empowerment. Your passion, endurance, and all of your t-shirts. 
I just wanted to know, how would you define what it means to be an empowered woman? And where do you find your strength? Um, just not, not accepting no as an answer to anything. I mean, I got told for four years I couldn't be a dentist and a wrestler. And the more I was told I have to choose one or no, you can't do this, no, you can't do that, it, it really pissed me off and I'm stubborn. So I wanted to prove everybody wrong. But just really, you know, digging deep down and, and telling yourself no is not a real word. I like what you said about proving people wrong. I think as an empowered woman, and especially a woman in wrestling, for years and years, you don't get taken seriously. But the best thing is when you do prove people wrong. And for me, that's empowering because then they turn around and like, oh, okay, so this is great. And then you get shut down again, and then you keep proving them wrong again and again and again and again. And it really uh, puts a smile on my face. Small little victories like that make me feel empowered because I truly believe, especially in 2023, and women in wrestling, we have so much to offer and so much to give and so much passion and love for the business. And I think when given the opportunity, we always step up. And I think that's empowering for women. Love that question. Sisters doing it for themselves right here. Brooke, we have time for a couple more questions. Get those hands up, don't be shy. Two more questions I think we can take and then they've got to get back to the Please autograph lose, area. Oh, like this Jack. I like the way you're backing each other up. Yes. There we go. Hi, uh, for Jamie. Uh, when, when you were wrestling Tony Storm and you was a heel and obviously she was a face and then just the crowd just started getting so behind you and obviously booing her. When you went back, you know, backstage after that, what was the kind of the talk about that? Like, did you, did you see that coming? It kind of was brewing up for a little bit slowly, but then it, it just kind of went mad. Yeah, I, it was very shocking to me in a way. Um, but, you know, the fans just, for some reason, I don't know why, they all got behind me and that meant so much to me. And when we got backstage, it was just a really hard fought match. I think we really went out then Kicked each other's asses. You broke Tony's face. And I broke Tony's face. Sorry, Tony. Actually, not sorry. I'm not sorry about that now. I'm never sorry. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I, I, like, the reaction was really good. And it made me feel like I'm doing something right. I'm doing myself good by just going out there and, like, doing my best. And, yeah, just kind of going with the flow, really. I, like, there wasn't anything in particular that got me to that point, I don't think. It was just a kind of accumulation of multiple things. So it was a really special moment for me. And yeah, I just, I'll cherish that for a, a very long time. Fantastic. Right, we have a question here. Oh, for the long <laughs> just do the question. Brit, and when you got attacked by JAS and the outcast, why did Jamie not come out and save you? Because she was at the hospital. She broke her arm in the match. Ruby, <laughs> much broken. appreciated. Oh, we've got a Ruby Soho fan here. Oh. Oh. Boo! Yeah. Well, at least there's one of you here. <laughs> Came in like a lion. I feel bad I couldn't help, but honestly, Tony Storm messed my arm up a little bit. It's getting a lot better now and feels okay. But uh, that sucks. And of course, if I was there, I would have come out and helped. Absolutely. Absolutely a pleasure to have you both here. Because you are both my favourites. Thank you. But I would like to know, we heard you who you would like to face. Rhea Ripley and Charlotte. I, they would be iconic matches. But at WrestleMania, a while, a wee while ago, we had the women make the main event the big stage. If we had, used to had the chance, what type of match would you have for the opponent she's have just said you want to face on the big stage? Cage match. Say, uh, lights out, no DQ match. Can, can I just throw something on there as well? Because obviously WrestleMania is, it's kind of a big thing. We've covered that. 
However, as AEW gets bigger and bigger, how far off do you feel we are from seeing the AEW Women's World Championship main event and AEW pay-per-view? Well, Wembley's coming up. <laughs> that would be the dream for me personally. Um, I think, you know, when the time is right and I think the match is right, that's when the main event will happen. But Wembley is coming up, so I'm going to uh, manifest it. And hopefully everyone here will for me as well. All right, no pressure, but one final question from our fans. Um, should we go? Who's got it? I feel, I feel drawn. There we go. Yes. And it's a lady. <laughs> come, come over here. Come and, come and be part of this. Don't be shy. Here we go. Right, no pressure, but... Oh. Okay, I wouldn't. Be. First thing, I love both of your shoes. Thank you. They're really cool. Thank you. Um, but my actual question is. Sorry, one second. This is why I hold the mic. Yeah. What's your training regimes? It's all over the place because we travel so much. I, anytime we're traveling, I love to find a fitness class in whatever city we're in, like a Pilates class or a HIT class. But you have to have your cardio up. You have to do cardio at least, what, four or five days a week. And you have to weight train. I mean, wrestling is, is hard, and you have to train in the ring, but you have to do the work outside of the wrestling ring just as much. And that's stuff that, like, some people don't think about when they start this. Like, like Jamie said earlier, you, you really have to train your body to be ready for war at a moment's notice. Yeah, you have to do a lot of complex lifting. I mean, like, clean complexes, deadlift squats, you know, the kind of compound exercises that would be in a very basic workout routine nothing fun who really enjoys working out i do not <laughs> i go up and down with it but at the moment i hate it but i'm sure i'll love it again at some point but the thing that gets you through it is that you have to do it it's an essential final question for me ladies what's next for you after manchester toby carvery That's all I'm thinking about. I'm so tunnel visioned on the Toby Carvery. Wembley's later. You want the Carvery? Yeah, no. I, can I can have this one thing. No, we, we really need to get this shit over and done with, with the outcasts and be move on because we're, we're sick of them. I think you guys are sick of them. So let's, let's, let's have our mat. Let's do the matchup. Let's get rid of them. Let's finish them for this good. Door. And then we're coming over here for Wembley. So who's all coming to Wembley? Everybody then. Literally. Good, I hope I to see everybody there. Literally everyone, we're so excited to have you guys here. Any final words for your fans? Um, I will, thank you guys, literally from the bottom of my heart. This signing has, has just been such a feel good weekend. You guys are wonderful, wonderful people. You're so appreciative, you're so thankful. And we are 10 times that in return to all of you. Without you, there's no us, there's no AEW, there's no show at Wembley. It's really all of you guys and your support. And I hope you realize how, how you guys hold the power for professional wrestling. It's the fans world, we're just, we're just trying to live in it. And I'm gonna be very biased and say the UK is the best. I bloody love the UK. Perfect. Thank you, ladies, so much. Give it up one more time Cheers. for Britt Baker and Jamie Hayter.